This is a 35 year old male patient, complains of blurry vision. Examination shows a hypopion uveitis, which is non granulomatous, and fundus, there is vitritis. Core lab tests were done, and all core lab tests should include tests which will rule out syphilis, tuberculosis, sarcoidosis. And in this case, MANTU came very highly positive and the chest x-ray also was suggestive. The diagnosis was tuberculosis. Tuberculosis also can present in any part of the uveal tract as inflammation. So one could have iridocyclitis. This could be chronic, more common, but could also be an acute iridocyclitis. It could present as a granulomatous iridocyclitis or even non-granulomatous like in this patient. Choroiditis is another common presentation of tuberculosis and it could be anything focal, multifocal or as multiple choroidal tubercles. Retinal vasculitis, vitritis, papillitis can also be part of tuberculosis. So tuberculosis can present as pan uveitis or any of the above mentioned uh, uveitis. The difficulty involved in tuberculous uveitis is establishing the diagnosis and secondly ensuring the treatment compliance. If the patient already has extraocular tuberculosis, the diagnosis may be easier. If the patient has only findings in the eye, then to rule out tuberculosis or to diagnose tuberculosis is difficult. In any treatment of tuberculosis, a pulmonologist should be involved. The second problem is in ensuring treatment compliance. The treatment of tuberculosis goes on for at least 6 months to 8 months. Patients could default on their treatment which leads to both recurrence of disease as well as resistance. A 46 year old lady presents with floaters. On examination, she has granulomatous keratic precipitates, aqueous flare and cells. One would therefore consider differential diagnosis of granulomatous iridocyclitis. Infectious causes to be considered, tuberculosis, syphilis, Lyme disease. Non-infectious causes to be considered, sarcoidosis and VKH syndrome. Investigations are sent for the same and chest x-ray serum ACE angiotensin converting enzyme came out positive. Chest x-ray showed hilar lymphadenopathy and serum ACE was elevated. The diagnosis sarcoidosis. So granulomatous KP is at presentation bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy on chest x-ray. Further examination revealed conjunctival follicle-like lesions. Biopsy of this revealed non-caseating granuloma, non-caseating granuloma hallmark of sarcoidosis. So the patient was treated for sarcoidosis. This is a multi-system granulomatous disease. While various other systems can be involved along with the eye, eye involvement can sometimes be the presenting feature. And the eye involvement could again be anterior, intermediate, posterior uveitis or panuveitis. Iridocyclitis can be acute or chronic and is usually granulomatous in nature. There are certain specific signs seen in sarcoidosis in the posterior segment. One of these is vitreous snowballs, very characteristically seen in sarcoidosis. Retinal periphlebitis, it can present as candle wax drippings. This is a terminology used for the extensive exudation seen around the retinal vessels. Choroid can show some small or large granulomas. Sarcoidosis, as told before, should be suspected in any case of uveitis. Diagnosis is by chest x-ray or a chest CT, serum ACE and lysozyme levels. Biopsy can be diagnostic from any skin lesion any conjunctival follicles or a lacrimal gland biopsy. Non-caseating granuloma suggests the diagnosis. Management includes again corticosteroids and immunosuppressives. Bassett's disease. Bassett's disease is a generalized occlusive vasculitis. So it does not just involve the eye. It's a generalized condition. The four major criteria for diagnosis are oral aphthous ulcers, genital ulcers, skin lesions including erythema nodosum and ocular inflammation. Ocular inflammation can be 
acute iritis with transient hypopion. In fact, hypopion uveitis is also a term used for Bassett's disease in the eye. Hypopion is otherwise an uncommon finding in uveitis unless the patient has infectious endophthalmitis. We just saw a patient before who presented with hypopion and had tuberculosis and tuberculosis should be considered especially wherever the disease is endemic. Otherwise, a transient hypopion with acute iritis, young male patient, Bassett's disease should be considered. Patient can end up with loss of vision mainly because of retinal arthritis, periphlebitis, vitritis and optic neuritis. So, the disease in the eye is recurrent and explosive. In a matter of two to four years, the recurrent episodes of vasculitis can lead to loss of vision.